Hello LJ, thank you so Hi. much for joining Hi. us Hi. this Hi. afternoon Great. Uh, to the our program, honestly, the honest. Yeah. And uh, I know I've been uh, following you and uh, seeing you from quite a few years, uh, all the way back from Vizek. So uh, I thought uh, our uh, viewers would be interested to know more about you, to see who you are and what you actually are made of. Okay. So this <laughs> so, is me. This is yeah, what I'm made of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so where you're born and when you're born? Uh, I was born in Vizek, 82. Um, so yeah, I've been in Vizek for most of my uh, life, like, you know, mm -hmm. till my college, which I did in Chennai. So, so what did you do in your college? Uh, engineering. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what about Vizek? What did you, where did you study? Uh, why like I studied in uh, Gajwaka actually. Gajwaka. So I stayed in Gajwaka, mm -hmm. so like I grew up there. So my schooling was pretty much there. It mm -hmm. was, uh, I studied in a convent actually mm -hmm. uh, in Malkapuram. Malkapuram, <laughs> okay. So that is it. Mm -hmm. Then I did my uh, plus two in uh, Sri Chaitanya. Mm -hmm. uh, I studied for one year in uh, Tempani, but okay. I had to leave. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, I was not one of those typical students. So, uh, then I did my engineering in Chennai. Okay. I went for a couple of years, but then decided that mm. was not for me anyway. So. Mm. so when you said you were not those typical students, what do you mean by that? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm not a big believer in the whole uh, education system as we have now. Mm -hmm. uh, as a kid, I was, I was very interested in learning, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't think the current system supports learning. I mean, it's all about mug some random stuff up. Uh, the curriculum is bad uh, and teachers in most colleges are pretty stupid so mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but that that is that is the reality i mean you yeah. you can look at it even engineering is pretty much the same way. yeah so they are just try to spoon feed your stuff and prepare you for an exam nobody understands what they're learning uh. so i think it's a rather pointless exercise and waste of four years at least i can attest to that from a engineering point engineering of view point i will comment about other professions yeah. but with the exception of maybe medicine and few uh, professions like that, I think college is pretty much the same in India mm. most of the time. Like, you know. So, so uh, as a, as a kid, as a student, uh, yeah. you, were you radical uh, in these thoughts? By uh, then, or? I, okay, so the thing is, I really never saw it as being radical. Mm -hmm. I just saw it as being normal. Yeah. I just saw other people as not normal because <laughs> I I felt it was it was so obvious. It was staring at everybody in the face. Yeah. Uh, but maybe that was just uh, maybe that is just me. That's the way I think. So right from your from from your childhood yeah from days. school yes uh, from school uh, I hated writing notes mm. that uh, the teachers would give me. So I would I would like reading from the textbook. Uh, <laughs> so I would just write my own answers and then the teachers would not give me marks because they insisted I write exactly word by word the what same, they uh, exactly it has to be lines. you <laughs> can't reconstruct it which I felt was pretty silly because mm -hmm. you know it's the content not ex not the exact words but you know I think uh, teachers here um, have this sort of like you know uh, have this slightly god complex so <laughs> uh, they're like you know this is what we tell you and this is what you should follow uh, mm -hmm. It's, it's not interactive, it's not focused on learning uh -huh. as much as it should be. So there's no dialogue between the teacher and the student. Most of the time the teacher tells you something and then you do it. You hmm. do, uh, the, I mean, at least, I don't know, maybe the system's changed now. So but, um, how, how did you actually get the thought that you should write your own stuff when you were in school? Uh, I don't know. It just came natural to me. Like for me, uh, I mean, like I was, I was the... Was, was it an influence of some books or somebody? Or? Um, I'm not sure if it was books. I think like for me, it just made common sense because like when somebody asks you a question, you're supposed to answer it, right? The the answer is correct or incorrect based on the gist of what you're mm -hmm. saying. It's not using a specific word mm -hmm. uh, or just using it in that specific sentence, which was most of the time seems very artificially constructed. So I would take the liberty of rearranging it. And sometimes I felt that it was not concise enough. Or mm. It was not giving the meaning adequately. So I would just sort of rearrange things and mm -hmm. then they would penalize me and not give me marks. But uh, yeah, my parents were pretty cool with it. Yeah. So they said like, you know, you have to focus on learning. You don't have to focus on marks. So I think that way I got off easy. Uh -huh. So I didn't have to really worry so much. About so your like, parents were also happy with you? Uh, well, I would happy in a sense that I was very stubborn. I won't <laughs> do things any other way. So yeah, I think yeah. they made their peace with it. Uh, but yeah, I think they've been like very supportive because, you know, I'm pretty sure like, mm -hmm. 
uh, otherwise you know people, uh, most parents would have literally <laughs> beaten the day like yeah. their kids still they if, if they didn't get the marks right yeah. it was very marks uh-huh. obs- marks oriented I mean, we, we are in a marks obsessed society i mean you open a newspaper and all you see is like marks like you know chaitanya <laughs> narayana this what do you what do you right now and all that i mean that is the society we live in it's a, it's a very mark oriented uh thing and uh, marks are taken as a proxy for uh, competence or mm-hmm. knowledge which they actually are not that's the problem like there is no problem with uh, rewarding excellence or knowledge okay. so the problem is marks are a poor proxy of it mm. uh, how much somebody scores in an exam doesn't really reflect how much they actually understand it mm. so i even saw that engineering we had a lot of uh, i mean i i i will bet this and give it to you like you know you go to any engineer mm-hmm. like in why the hyderabad wherever four years mm-hmm. down you just call those guys and just like give them the smallest uh, like an electronics engineer or something an electrical engineer and give him a small electrical appliance that's just probably broken a wire mm-hmm. and 95% of them probably won't be even able to solder the damn thing so uh, they re- read a lot of theoretical stuff but uh, if you ask them to open an appliance and see what's wrong with it or troubleshoot it they you'll just they'll just draw a blank mm-hmm. so uh, the education it's, it's <laughs> it is just a big scam I mean, yeah so it, it is so yeah. uh, it is uh, it is a scam yeah. Um, yeah yeah but that is because of the way uh, a lot of forces in the society mm-hmm. have you know come together so we we have this obsession with marks marks yeah. marks you know when you keep on talking i just want to keep on listening <laughs> you know and moreover because of all the hair that you have you uh, look like a modern day baba oh uh, yes uh, so that's my plan b because i yeah. realize that you know if, if business doesn't work out uh religion is a good yeah. business so uh, i'm just growing this plan b you know in case my businesses just don't uh, do well i'm just going to go put on some clothes <laughs> and you know tell them i'm the word of god or you know i'll give you something wisdom advice give me all your money give me your properties you know it's a good life you know you see yeah. that all on tv right yeah, it's yeah, easy money you know yeah, investment yeah, yeah. tax free it's recession proof and you don't have to like advertise or do anything like people come they they'll come they'll advertise they'll get more people it's like it's better than amway <laughs> so, so you know but the probably the hair's going to help so. yeah <laughs> so um let's say okay so you didn't you didn't write what this teacher wanted you to write yeah and, not, but not what are you doing now in hyderabad what is that you're doing uh, so i run a rest- i run a couple of restaurants oh, yeah? um and uh, i also run a bar mm-hmm. so yeah that's what i'm doing right now for the last 8 years i've been in the uh, food and beverage business how did how did a person from wisak get into food and beverages and what kind of food do you sell why not why shouldn't a person? <laughs> first first of all i te- i strongly object to the thing from wisak because wisak you know it's it's a wonderful city yeah so, so the the reason why i asked the question a person from wisak that too who grew up in gajwaka you know and you're selling italian food right yeah how can a person who's born or brought up in wisak gajwaka turn out to be a person selling italian food um so i think i see honestly i don't think where you are born or you know the sort of location that uh, you grew up and has much bearing on what a person can really do see end of the day it's all about acquiring knowledge mm-hmm. and that i did with a lot of a little bit of travel a lot of reading and tons of research into the whole cuisine so what and you mean to say is no matter where you're born no matter how you're born absolutely i i i mean it's, uh, you can still acquire the knowledge you you can i mean there are a lot of other circumstances so i mean thankfully like i i can say um i was always a voracious reader of books so like in even in school i had a library of like more than a thousand books mm-hmm. so and i would read 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 so i would actually sit in the class so i i was one of obviously in, in one of the front front benches so because nobody actually nobody looks at the front benches everybody is focused on all the all mischievous yeah, kids in the last yeah. benches so you can sit right under the teacher's nose and get away with things so i had my own library yeah. and you know i grew up re- reading a lot of science fiction so you you used to read books yeah and the teacher was telling something else yes absolutely so basically you were always in your own mind yes, in your I own was, world i i decided like this is what i want to do and uh, in in that sort of a sense probably i was very stubborn uh, so i would do what i wanted to mm. do and i think that sort of reflects even till date like where uh, i do what i want to mm. most of the time so, so how much money do you make now 
uh, well, I think I'm comfortable. I, I make a decent amount of money. <laughs> so decent doesn't sound in, uh, does it sound in lakhs or crores? Uh, definitely not in crores. Uh, the government takes away most of the money, unfortunately. Uh, so if they weren't taking away all my money in taxes, maybe I'd be making more. But yeah, it's it's quite it's a reasonably so, good number. Yes. So what you're saying is, no matter where you're born, no matter how you study, no matter what the world thinks, you can still lead a comfortable life. Yes, uh, you you can obviously. I mean, uh, so I never really use my college degree for anything. Like I don't even I don't even I've never even taken it. So I went for a couple of years. Then I stopped writing my exam. So I decided it was a waste of time. So Did I you complete your engineering? Yeah, well, I think I have a certificate <laughs> somewhere in some college. But, you know, I wouldn't say I so much as completed it. But anyway, let's not get into that aspect of the uh, uh, discussion. Uh, I don't think where you're born uh, has to do much with it. I mean, of course, there are uh, opportunities. Maybe if I was born in a village and I didn't have access to reading materials, my life would have been much different. But uh, what so. about a person who, who has an opportunity now, even though he's born in a village, you can still access it just with a click of a button. Absolutely. Now that's uh, that's wonderful. I mean, uh, I remember when I was in school, internet was still very new. I mean, around plus two, that was the time. Uh, I would save all my pocket money for, and then uh, it used to be this, this little internet center in Daspala Hill, Cyber Cafe, I think I remember. And then they used to charge us 120 rupees per hour. And mm. this was at a time where you know, petrol was probably like 22 rupees or some 20 rupees or something. 96 okay. something? Yeah, uh, around, uh, this was 97-ish, I think. That was when we had that place. And I would save all my money and just like one hour. And mm. one hour, we would be there. We would just like start downloading mm. all the text to read mm -hmm. onto this little floppy disk mm -hmm. side. I'm not even sure most most of the viewers watching today would even remember floppy, floppy disks. Yeah. CDs are gone. It is now. the black thing which yes, has that. Yes, with that thing. So. <laughs> We download all the books, uh, PDFs, uh, technical documentation, because I used to be into programming. I would download that. One hour was just downloading stuff on a very, again, 64 kbps was mm -hmm. supposed to be like really fast. But now it's, uh, everybody has it on their phones, on their mobile phones. So the access to information is much better now. So even um, compared to what the sort of access that I had, now there's no excuse unless you, you're really poor and you don't even have access to like mm. uh, internet connection or something like that. Most people uh, today, if they want to learn anything, literally anything under the sun, it's available on the internet. Mm -hmm. So it it has surpassed even like anything that schools or colleges can teach you, everything. Mm -hmm. MIT has classes online, you have like free, uh, free courses. courses. Uh, the, the Khan Academy is doing yeah. some great work. Yeah. YouTube has tutorials, everything. Literally, yeah. you want to build a rocket, that's somebody who will show you how, how to, to do it. Uh, so, uh, I mean, there's a world of information out there. So, so um, basically what you're saying is, now the situation is much better than how it was previously. Oh, absolutely. It was definitely. And yeah. now we can get access to information much faster. Much, much faster. Quick. I yeah. mean, this has been the way in the West for quite some yeah. time. But I think uh, in the last... 10 years it's been it's seen a lot more progress i mean we've had internet centers even in small towns by the time 2000 2002 but now what's happened is everything has moved on to your mobile mm -hmm. so even there's this villager uh, living in something he has access to whatsapp uh, he has now geo so the literally the price of internet have fallen down mm -hmm. uh, so everybody has access to the internet and That's so right. Provided they use it, right? They use uh, it. Instead of spreading so, yeah. their stuff online <laughs> and WhatsApp forwards. If they spend the time trying to read and acquire information, uh, I think it's, it's... So let's say, let's take an 18-year-old kid or 19-year-old kid who has a cell phone. Yes. Uh, and most of them, you know, they either uh, spend their time on Facebook, yes. YouTube, yes. watching, you know, whatever stuff, movies yes. or, you know, shows like Jabardast or whatever. Okay. Or uh, big boss shows and all that. So, would you recommend people doing that? Or uh, okay, so I'll tell you one of the things is I haven't had a television uh, <laughs> since uh, I think since I moved out of my house and went to college from the year 2000. I've never really had a television. Even now in my house, I don't have a, don't TV. Have a TV. So, uh, TV is mostly uh, I mean it's mostly useless. I mean it's fine. Uh, <laughs> like, so, so most of the shows that you mentioned, I don't know. I you haven't know. seen them. <laughs> I don't want to see them because from what I hear about them, uh, it's just it's just mind-boggling that people would want to watch and uh, well see when you have access to I mean at that age people just want are looking for entertainment uh, I don't blame them but you know that's the difference if somebody has the drive to learn and the willingness to learn they should probably not do that so and spend more time learning so what was your drive what was your drive to learn why did you want to learn why did I, you want I, to get into that cafe uh, and download everything on that floppy 
because because i love learning for me like uh, i don't know i even now i read a lot like so half my day whenever i'm home like all night like i usually sleep at 4 or 5 in the morning so from uh, 12 to morning 12 to 4 at least the four solid hours i read uh, like anything could be anything could be opinion pieces could be the news what's happening in the industry trends uh, i mean i love learning so i mean i think uh, i can't explain why <laughs> but it's just you don't know the I, why but you just do it Yeah I I think it I I want to know I'm a very curious person I want to know everything like you know how does this work why why does that work and how I mean everything history and uh, economics politics law I keep reading a lot So I know you're a big foodie Oh yes you're a cr- as you can see <laughs> <laughs> you're you're a crazy coder yeah. and uh, you have what else are you I'm crazy and I'm a coder so yeah two, <laughs> two separate things <laughs> uh, um So I I love music. Uh-huh. Uh, unfortunately, I can't play an instrument yet, but uh, I uh, I listen to a lot of music, mm-hmm. a lot of blues. So that's yeah. what uh, got you that uh, music, uh, live music in your restaurant. Oh yeah, yes. Uh, we uh, I mean we have a very successful live music scene. We pretty much kickstarted a lot of uh, genres of music, mm-hmm. especially Telugu. Telugu live bands is something that you know that we uh, kickstarted at mm-hmm. Abula Rasa. Uh, so yeah, we we have a lot of bands. So. Uh, we have bands coming from delhi bombay that mm-hmm. are play independent music so mm-hmm. it's all original content so we promote a lot of those mm-hmm. artists that's good so my first question should be actually be how is that you started the restaurant okay so i uh, well i've been a very picky eater uh, ever since i was a kid so my parents had a really tough time because i was always nitpicking this mm-hmm. is good this is not good so uh, even from my college days i used to spend most of my time like eating out like going out trying new food again i decided like you know I am a very curious person with a lot of things. So even with food it's that I want to try new things, expose my palate to new flavors, new tastes. Um I think that helped uh, in a way and and then when I used to come back to Vaidak like you know after spending time in Chennai and then after that I moved to Hyderabad. Whenever I came to Vaidak I felt it was like a bit lacking like we didn't have any options to eat. Um so I always wanted to do a restaurant. Uh then at one point I decided you know why not do it now because a restaurant uh, setting up a restaurant is actually also very physically intensive uh, it's uh, it's not just about putting some money into it because i'm a very hands on person so literally when we opened up the restaurant in uh, vaidak the first restaurant we just literally had four or five people so mm. i had to like you know take the orders <laughs> and then i had to prepare the bills and then there was like somebody else running to the kitchen sometimes Start you know cooking. serving stuff putting it out taking clearing so it was also very physically intensive thing so i decided you know uh, that's not something a lot of people want to do restaurants when they have like retired and try it out but uh, you know that's not very feasible because it's physically intensive and it's much better for the younger people to do get mm-hmm. into that sort of business and then i decided to see you know it's much it's better to figure out much early if you can do it or if you can't like you know i never got into it saying like you know i'm 100% sure it works like you know it's business you never really know sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't So I thought well if it doesn't work that's it you know I'll I'll get back to my software business which which I was doing quite successfully yes. so I thought okay let's give it a shot let's go all in so that's why also the reason why I opened in Vizag because mm-hmm. I said okay if it works in Vizag you know you have a solid product because you know you know Vizag crowd right yeah. so how it is like you know of course first three months everybody is going to come so after that then yeah. most restaurants fizzle out mm-hmm. so I thought the good proof of concept would be in Vizag and, and why did you come been. up with the Italian cuisine Italian I love Italian so mm. I love Italian even now like that's the cuisine I eat like most of the time So basically you started the cuisine Italian because you love Italian I love Italian not because it had a demand uh, No <laughs> <laughs> Well uh, yeah actually I never really thought about that uh, so but uh, I should have in hindsight um uh, but uh, yeah it's it's, it's And you also st- and what was the name and that I you knew, gave what uh, was the name that you gave to the restaurant Okay so it's the flying spaghetti monster flying spaghetti monster do you mean the spaghetti will come flying to you or yeah well so we believe that the flying spaghetti monster created the universe <laughs> so, so why did you name it flying spaghetti monster yeah so uh, well i didn't want to probably name it something really boring uh, like and why did you ch- think of a chinese restaurant because chinese would be you know any any day hot hot cake yeah but like i prefer italian over chinese <laughs> any day <laughs> i mean i like i mean no disrespect i like asian food i mm-hmm. eat a lot of that mm-hmm. as well uh, i'm a big fan of sushi mm-hmm. well, i mean that's japanese but uh i this was something that i was confident that 
I could also make very well. You can make very. I well. can make very well. So. So you think that that was your strength? Absolutely. See, I might like a million things. Like I'm a big fan of steak, mm-hmm. right? But uh, you know, I wouldn't. Uh, or like, let's say sushi, right? I I eat like sushi at least like once a week. But mm. that doesn't mean I would be able to run a sushi run a restaurant sushi place, because yeah. I'm I I have no clue about how how it's made. Like you know, there, there's a lot of intricacy into it. Like with Italian, the. I've done a lot of research into it. I understand the cuisine in and out, the philosophy of behind the cuisine, the regions in Italy, what ingredients go, and how we can use what we have to arrive at something that's tasty. And then, um, yeah, of course, I it, it yeah. was still a big bet. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was a gamble. It was a gamble, but uh, it was a gamble that paid off. So, was it a gamble with which you were able to bear even the cost of the loss? Yeah. So, because see, I uh, spent. a few years i i started a software company in around 2006 mm-hmm. so and then <clears throat> then i slowly started you know saving some money and um, you know when i thought i had a little bit which i could invest at a restaurant i thought like i'll take a gamble and see in mm. case if it doesn't work i'll just get back you to just my go back to, go, go back to my software yeah. business mm-hmm. you know which we had like a quite a good thing going on so that was it like you know i so it was like a You know, you you read the uh, poem "If" by Kipling, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I literally <laughs> gambled everything, really? like you know, on a toss of dice. Uh, mm. It was it. It paid off. So mm. it could have gone the other way around. Mm-hmm. Then obviously we wouldn't be here talking. Yeah. Right? Uh, it just happened. So, so it just happened. Uh, nothing was sure, mm. but I gave it the best shot. You gave it the best I, shot. I, I I carefully considered. All the possible factors. So Nine. did you? So did you design the tables, the chairs, the, how the decor the, was? Oh, the first restaurant, literally everything from the scratch, right? The menus to everything. I used to remember you had the menu on a piece of paper. Yes, uh, <laughs> that that was the first <laughs> thing. So um, it was like so chaotic, uh, you know, getting things done. You know, I had no idea, idea with construction or what it uh, takes to get a place running. I mean, come to think of it, eight years now in that line after having built a couple of places, I still have no idea. <laughs> <because> <laughs> It's always chaotic. Uh, the contractors don't turn up on time. What the problem is, they don't deliver. So it's it's a very uh, it's a very challenging. So what thing. is the first thing as a restauranter? Yes. What is the first thing that a person who wants to start a restaurant business should do? Okay. So one, um, what should they do? One, they should really know their food. Okay, there there no substitute to it. You have to really know. I mean, there are people who also get sometimes you know they get a chef and say you know do it up, and they're more like an investor sort of a restaurant operators. But I find the most successful ones are always the ones who know their food. Who are the chef? And and also who know their who food. Know like their say, okay, you may not be able to be the chef yourself, mm-hmm. uh, but you should know. When you eat something, whether it's right or wrong, right. otherwise you're totally dependent on a third person, and that will not allow you to control the quality. And That's right. If you're always depending on other people, then you know you don't really know. Yeah, what you don't doing. really know. So, yeah. Right. So I think that's one of the important things. A lot of people. I mean, F and B is a very. Um, it's a field that a lot of people are fascinated with. Everybody right. wants to do a restaurant, uh-huh. but it's, it's like one of the most challenging businesses to be in and has a relatively high failure right. rate. So let's say I want to start a restaurant and you know the first thing that strikes that strikes to my mind is whether I should create the menu or should I just try the food and then create the menu. No, for, um well you can't um you can't just like create an arbitrary menu right from the scratch, right? Like you can you can probably write something up on the paper, but that's not how it will taste. Uh, You could, as uh, a concept, first come up with a menu on paper. Like you could write it up. Like let us say, if you wanted to an Asian place, then you could write some noodles, some you know, some curries and the uh, you know different styles. And then the important thing is how you make them. Like mm-hmm. you know, experiment with them, and you will have to do a run in the kitchen to see how it tastes. Mm-hmm. And then probably get some of your friends and give it to them and see you if they like try. it or not. Uh, and then probably go. I mean. And also pr- people you don't know very well, mm-hmm. uh, because you know your friends are always gonna say, "Oh, that's amazing, dude! <laughs> it's like very awesome." So you don't need that sort of friend yeah. to give your feedback. You need friends who are gonna be like rather brutal with their feedback. Yeah. So you need because that's very important. A lot of time I see this, you know, people feel a little bit hesitant, and they always say, "Yeah, that's good. That's, that's good." good. Uh, so when people ask me for an opinion, I always give them the, the honest, honest opinion. opinion, even if they like it, they don't like it, because I think I'll be doing a disservice to them if I tell them like, you know, dude, this is awesome, you should start it, it's gonna be a big hit, and then they do it and it doesn't work out. So they'll have to do uh, 
like in marketing, they usually do focus groups. So you have a bunch of people and you give them a product, you get their feedback. And you try to sort of get people of multiple demographics and of different groups. And like, example, if it's Italian, then you would not want just people who are already used to Italian food, but also people who probably never tried Italian never tried food. Italian. Because if you can't convince the segment, like when I opened in Vaidak, like very few people were even aware of Italian food. Like we didn't even have Domino's in Vaidak back then. I think we had Pizza Hut. Yeah. So when I first <coughs> opened and I was serving them the proper thin crust Italian, a lot of people were like, this is not a pizza. Because for them, pizza was that big fat yeah. uh, pizza, pizza no, hut or yeah. even the Domino's yeah. if they've eaten elsewhere. Yeah. So most of the people were used to that fat crust. Mm -hmm. And then I would have to explain them like, this, this is, is the proper pizza. Like pizza is Italian, this is Italian pizza. So there's a lot of education that went into the process. So when you're doing a sort of a survey, you also have to make sure that a lot of people who are not properly exposed to your cuisine, how do they react mm -hmm. when they're given to it? So their context of eating the food is not uh, in terms of like, okay, this is Italian, therefore this this is meant to be in such a way, therefore I eat it, does this match that? That's not what you're looking at. You just give them some food, they eat it and do they like it or not? Mm. That's a very important aspect that a lot of people uh, don't. Like sometimes people are like, okay, this is some esoteric cuisine, this is some... Um, Spanish dish, it's supposed to taste exactly like that. But if the people overall don't really like that sort of a taste, it's, it, it, it could yeah. affect. So you have to find a balance between both. That's right. So uh, let's say <clears throat> I made my menu, I have the money, and now I'm on, on the lookout for a place. Yeah. What What is the kind of place that... Okay, so the thing with location is sometimes you'll never really know so mm. that location is again one of the most important factors for a restaurant mm. and, um, but you know the, the, it again depends on your model so i have a restaurant in Vaidak which is pretty much on the prime road mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then i have one in hyderabad and jubilee hills which is sort of tucked into a lane where literally nobody, nobody can, can see the see place mm. the only way people know it is if they've heard about it yeah. or they find it online yeah. but you know both the restaurants do well so mm. No, I can't say that sometimes having a prime location is needed. Sometimes the prime location can also hurt your business. Like if you're on a very busy road, very busy road. and you're trying to give them a slightly quiet, nice, peaceful experience, then that might not be very conducive to it. That's right. Uh, but if you're doing something like, for example, if it's a, a Burger King or a, like a fast food place, you have to be in a very busy street with a lot of uh, you know people going around. The footfall is important. Yeah. So how many employees do you have right now? Uh, spread across like all the outlets, I think we have close to uh, maybe uh, 150 people. 150 more. employees. I think more than, uh, um, yeah, you can say close to 150. Close people. to 150, wow. wow. So you generate a lot of employment. Oh, yes. <laughs> Has yeah. been that one of your motives? No, I see. I never started a business saying that, you know, I'm going to provide employment. So I started a restaurant because I thought like, you know, this is something that I love doing. So let me do it mm -hmm. and so everything that came like be it the money or it was just a byproduct of it. is a byproduct of that so the primary goal has always been that you know, this is something i want to do this is something i'm going to have fun doing um and this is something that i think i'm good doing You're good so which is very important a lot of people a lot of times people give you this advice you know have a passion follow it that's a rubbish advice <laughs> you should not follow your passion like yeah. for example like I might have a passion about tennis, like, uh -huh. but if I spend all my life like playing tennis, like, I'm gonna suck at it. Yeah, like, okay, I, I'm not into sport, but mm -hmm. I know for a fact that if I spend all my life, had I started, you know, I would still suck at it. That's not my thing. <laughs> but I know that this is something that I am good at. Like coding, yes, mm -hmm. I'm good at it. Mm -hmm. But like, had I picked a career in painting, yeah. <laughs> I would have been like probably some guy drawing stuff on the roads, you know? Who knows? Probably you can be that. Probably, Picasso. but you know, so I think it's 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 very. That's right. What I, I no, totally it, it understand is, what you're saying. It is very important yeah. to sometimes know your limitations yeah. also. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, sometimes you're like, anybody can do anything, which is nice in theory, yeah. but uh, you sometimes have to take like a calculated... So we can uh, say that a few people can do a few things. Okay, so that that's a very controversial statement because, uh, you know, there are uh, there's evidence on both sides mm -hmm. of it. But, you know, sometimes you see uh, there's Mozart at age five, he was composing. Mm -hmm. And I know people who've been like in music for 20 years, but can't yeah. even do something that is one tenth of what Mozart is. So there is a certain aspect to it that, you know, you're naturally born with certain abilities and the rest of it can be developed. So, mm -hmm. I mean, um, you can reach the full potential 
through training but sometimes you know you just can't compete with somebody like you know a guy like Michael Michael Phelps uh-huh. his genetics is probably so <laughs> wired to that sort of a, his metabolism and everything uh, anybody else would probably have to work 10 times as that mm. so, so you think the environment in which they are born does that affect their absolutely absolutely who they are yes absolutely environment is very important mm. so uh, i grew up in a house where i was surrounded by books so mm. i took an interest to in books so then i i would read a was lot was your father a book reader oh uh, yeah my dad read my mom read my, my uh, everybody on my mother's side like voracious readers like so my maternal uncle he had like a big library so i would go to him and like literally like carry all the books i could uh, and uh, so reading actually changed a lot of things in the way i perceive the world so mm-hmm. i think it gave me a lot of exposure and uh, maybe if i had no access to books maybe if i grew up in a very conservative family that was very marx centric focus that said you know you have to do it Probably. read it uh, do your exams get good grades then do your m sets whatever do your engineering get a job like had they forced me literally or brainwashed me from the time i was a kid maybe i would have been a different person uh, so but uh, we don't know whether you'll be so successful or not Uh, no may- maybe you see uh, i wouldn't say like you know for a lot of people the success today i mean the definitions are changing right now now which all about startups it's been glamorized and all but you have to understand that this was like you know way back like yeah. more than a decade and a half ago well business was still considered uh, it was a taboo word yeah. back in the yeah. day yeah. Uh, business was a taboo word yeah. like somebody doing business was like almost like people would like yeah, why still, don't you just yeah, do a job that's right i still do used to remember when i was uh, around uh, 10 12 years old uh, one of my uncle uh, i told him he asked me hey what are you going to do i said uh, you know i'm going to get into a business when i grow old he said business why do you want to get into a business you know in business you got to cheat people you know you got to do stuff which you know crazy people do and it's not good you know yeah. that's the kind of taboo that we used to have yeah it it is um, i mean i think again it's a very um, community specific mindset because you know obviously the, the business communities in india always have been like uh, you you have the uh, the marwadi the gujaratis right. and right. all of them was, uh, but, but we of, in the yeah. south you know yeah. uh, the south has been obsessed with engineering <laughs> and medicine. <laughs> medicine you know that right yeah. uh, as soon as you're born as soon as you're born medicine. like you know they i think there's even these uh, they do some ridiculous little thing with the baby so they Yeah, they, they put some put stuff in front of you. The baby should go and catch. I mean, probably it's just fun anyway. Yeah. But you know, it, it it's it's a reflection of the societal mindset where you know uh, you have to be an engineer or you have to be a doctor or something like get a job or then join some civil services yeah. or something. So, what is the message that you have to a person who's around twenty five to thirty years old who has already messed up his life okay. because listening to all this kind of you know nonsense and who is not able to figure out who he is why he is born you know what is the purpose in his life or wh- why he is made you know okay so the thing is like i don't really think any anyone <laughs> knows why we are born we we are born and That's that right. is that is the state of nature mm-hmm. we are here and uh, what purpose is you know there is nobody who's going to come and tell you this is the purpose of your life so mm-hmm. if anybody tells you this is the purpose of your life this is what life purpose should be you should totally run away from them you know there is intrinsically i don't believe there is any purpose to life it is what you create mm-hmm. it's the meaning that you give it mm-hmm. so i think that comes from a lot of introspection and uh, you know i can understand that it can be hard if you have the whole society just trying to push you mm-hmm. into like one narrow lane mm-hmm. uh, so uh, do you think it can come from you know you running or getting attracted towards certain thing yeah definitely i mean uh, that is how it starts right like you know you look at something and say that's nice maybe i should do it too so it starts with that but the problem is that it shouldn't end with that there's a lot more thought process that has to follow it right the uh, business is about end of the day you have to make a profit like if you are in business um, you have to make a profit because uh, it's not that you run business for the sole purpose of making a profit mm-hmm. but if you don't make a profit the business will not the business last. will not it will die right. so there are a lot of people like you know there are times when there are so many things that i could do mm-hmm. which would probably have increased my profit but you know had i done something which was slightly more i felt on the commercial side but i would not because you know there's there the trade off that you do you know there's so much that you will do and that something that you will not do mm-hmm. uh, so it is good to be attracted towards something then they have to do a lot of groundwork research and i think probably they should talk to people who are already in business and a bunch of people talk mm-hmm. to them 
find out their experiences and see what were the challenges they had and read 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 a lot <laughs> you know that's something that people don't do enough don't do uh, you can uh, there's so many people right uh, the, you don't want to do everything yourself and discover rediscover everything right you don't want to rediscover the laws of gravity you don't want to rediscover e is equal to mc square like it's already there people have discovered it so you read the books you read about other people's experiences what are the challenges they went through and then you learn from them and then you you try it out and then you gain your own experience in the process mm. uh, so uh, in 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 your in the process of you know setting up your business and starting up the restaurants uh, were you hurt at any point of time i don't think there was anything like hurt like of course you you have ups and downs but i wouldn't really call it hurt because I mean, of a few incidents which you know probably you trusted your friends and probably- yeah see uh, that happens a lot uh, in business you know there's always uh, see i'm one of those very old school people that believes uh, you know i i i prefer like oral contracts like you know words supposed to be good uh, but that's not reality i mean it it would be stupid to keep doing that all the time thinking that you know everybody is going to be fair and honest it happens but uh, you know i don't really take anything very personally because whatever happens you know something has happened it's gone like you made a bad call now there is no point sitting and crying over it like you made a bad decision let us say you trusted x y z somebody ripped you off or got you into a bad deal but that's done you made a mistake now the thing is you know right mm. you know better mm. so even though you were hurt or even though you had a bad experience with some people nothing has stopped you nothing from doing Absolutely. what you wanted to do no, no, no. because i don't think it should stop you from doing it. because you i have already decided this is what i want to do and uh, i am doing something because of what i want to do and everybody else is secondary this all the other people around the environment everything is secondary that is what i want to do and that is what i'm going to do as long as and to the best of my ability i mean i'm not saying that everything i want to do i will be able to accomplish i mean this business you succeed sometimes you fail sometimes hmm. that is part of nature but i'm not going to let one small bad incident or something <laughs> stop me uh, yeah because we see that a lot right because uh, of one bad incident or because of one hurt hurt scenario yeah so i a lot of people say, leave ha huh, yes so for me uh, it was never very uh, i mean i never took anything very emotionally like okay so if there was something that happened for me that never really hurt me or mentally or emotionally at most it would have hurt me financially then my only thing is like how do i recover it. recover that how do i work towards it can i salvage it and somehow i have managed but uh, i never really took any incident as something that really affected me that i felt very depressed sad with a low morale i mean it is irritating at times but that's about it mm. like so um i know you're a, a night person yes absolutely <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when you're a night person uh, uh, does does working in the night uh, affect you or does no i mean it does working in the morning make oh, you yeah, more so, energetic oh uh, yeah so even that is why you know i couldn't do this interview <laughs> earlier because i i woke up just about like noon so i'm usually up to, no for me it doesn't really matter anymore because uh, of the of the work that you do work that i do and see uh, i am my the restaurant opens at 12 and uh, so we are not we don't open early in the morning so i don't have that but even if it was i would have made sure that i would only go late in the afternoon because i just can't wake up in the morning i'm not a morning person yeah. i read or i'm um, till morning 3 4 sometimes oh, yeah. even 5 mm. and then i sleep and then i wake up whenever i wake up so now i mean i have the luxury to do that right so one of the perks of business is sometimes you have the luxury of setting your own schedule so i mean now you have all the people to take care of it you have the managers and all doing it so i don't have to be there like every day and literally open the lock and open the shutter which i had to do when i started up yeah. but that was fine you know so those are the early days those were the early. those were the hard days i i won't say it was hard i mean it was fun it was it more was challenging more physically challenging. demanding but uh, yeah i never really complained like, i enjoyed the whole process uh-huh. actually so uh, i want to talk about your marriage i uh-huh. heard that your wedding was totally different from <laughs> the regular people yeah so yeah it was different in a way i could say so it was um, it was rather on uh, well you could say it was sort of semi planned mm-hmm. it was in goa actually uh-huh. so it it was sort of like a surprise for the uh, for my wife surprise for you for the bride <laughs> yes <laughs> so how can you surprise your wife with a wedding 
why can't you <laughs> <laughs> there's no there's no law that says see for, for a wedding the only thing that's required is like two people to consent right, that's, right. that's it like two yeah. people saying yes, yes. And that's it so what if your wife didn't want to get married to you I guess I still had one hour to find another wife in <laughs> Goa, but uh, yeah, it would have been a tough challenge. I think it was too short of a time frame, I guess. Uh, I, I, I really didn't prepare a uh, one hour business pitch to somebody saying, you know, this is why you should marry me <laughs> in case she had said no. But I think it is pretty obvious. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you, your wife happy with you? Yeah, of course. Um, uh, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you drive her nuts sometimes or...? <laughs> Uh, I drive everybody nuts, yeah. but uh, <laughs> I, I don't think there's anybody that I don't drive nuts, right from my mom. <laughs> from the day I was born, I've been driving people nuts, but that's okay. I mean, it, it, that's the part of the package. Yeah. <laughs> so, comparing to your, you know, let's say a decade ago, yes, till now, do you think opening that shutter was much harder or op- writing your check is much harder now. Um, I mean, I'm not sure. You'll have to elaborate <laughs> All on right. that. So, let's say, once you got, you know, those were the days where you, you need not take care of, you know, many things. I still had to, I had to take care of everything. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. All right. I yeah, you, to... you used to take care of everything, but you know, the cost of the loss was not much, so big as compared to what it is right now. Um, no, I mean, it, it would be the other way around. See, those were the starting days. So if I had a loss, the business would be out. It's yeah, closed, so right? if you so had a loss, the business would be out. out. But now if you have a loss, hmm. not only your business would be out, but a lot of things attached to you, you know, like your, what what do people say? Your social status, your name, Nothing. No, fame. I, 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 don't, I don't think that has anything to do with like, uh, personally, I'm not one of those people that really cares about like a social status or anything. I know so, you don't, yeah. but. It would not be affected. Like, so, I mean, so. See, financially, of course, like, you know, obviously, like, if you make no money, then obviously, you would not be able to live life the way. But uh, it has nothing to do with, uh, I mean, I don't think it has to do with specific with the restaurant or anything. I mean, it's in any business or any job. Like, you lose your job, obviously, you're not going to have money. That's right. If the business shuts down, you won't have any mm. money. So, I but, look at it that yeah, way. But so I don't look at it in a very emotional sort of a way. Mm-hmm. See, I'm going to do, if, if not this, if that doesn't work out, I'm going to find something else that I like doing which and which works. I think I'm good at it and I'll continue in, in a different path. Okay. So, uh, let's say, uh, if you, you know, open, you used to open the shutter, you used to run the kitchen, you used to take orders, you used to deliver it to the... Uh, I've literally delivered, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. done the home deliveries yeah. myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, used to deliver it to the customers. Now, you manage the uh, restaurant, you manage the people working in the restaurant, the managers, you take care of what's what's happening, uh, how much money you're making, how much money you're spending. And I'm not Scrooge. I don't have like so much money to like dive into it and count every day. Right. <laughs> no, but yes, it's, it's what, different... what is the difference uh, between those days and this? Okay, so now it's less physically demanding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to deliver. There's somebody to do the delivery. I mean, but the... The core part of the business has, I mean, for me, in my involvement of the core part of the business hasn't changed so much. Like, maybe I don't do as much of the work on the floor anymore. Mm-hmm. I, I've become a little bit fatter, maybe. But, uh, you know. So, has, it, has your role been narrowed down to a specific thing? Uh, not really because I keep poking my nose into every single thing so I'm one of those people and a very bad example that you know I sort of tend to micromanage things right from even now I just go if the store guys picked up some tissues I look at it like I don't like it change it (laughs) so I'm still that I do a little bit of micromanagement now and then here but uh, because that's because I spend most of my time in the restaurant do your employees love you for that uh, okay, they may love me, they may hate me because <laughs> probably I make their life a little bit more difficult. Uh, but it is important that I think that, you know, having that little bit of obsession with your business is important. Otherwise, probably that's know, the you, reason why your customers love you, right? Yeah. Because you take care of small things. Yeah, we have to. I mean, I, I try to the best of my ability. I mean, not do things 100% right, obviously, but uh, you know, I still... I mean, all my day, like, I'm basically at the restaurant. Because honestly, I don't really uh, have a very active social life outside of the restaurant. Because I, I'm a little bit of an introvert myself. So, which most people introvert. can't make out. <laughs> but uh, I usually prefer being at the restaurant. Or I'm out eating, trying out new food. Or I'm 
back home doing my reading or or I'm online, you know, making posts <laughs> about various issues. Yeah. So that that's what I do. So, so Facebook is one of your favorite. Uh, uh, so so I I love Facebook in in the way that it. uh you get to read a lot of uh, perspective so mm-hmm. i mean prior to social media it was all about you would read a newspaper right so you would read a newspaper and you know somebody wrote something about that issue but you don't really know what the people's perception of something is right so government passes policy xyz what do people think about it how do you know you don't know five years till the next elections now we go on facebook you see so many different people you mm-hmm. know uh, good things bad things but you know what's going on in their mind and that sort of gives help gives you a sort of a um indicator about you know the trends that are going on in society so for me it's it's a very academic interest i mean i i like you know seeing what everybody is thinking about various issues and is there some sort of debate that we can influence because mm-hmm. obviously i have some ideas which i believe are correct so how do i put them across and facebook i think is a good medium mm-hmm. regard i mean even with all its uh, shortcomings so i think so, it's a good uh, platform you have come so far uh from how you were previously and you have grew your business you have grown your restaurants no grown- uh, that's the thing i don't think i have come like very far so i th- for me like i started about 8 years ago 8 and a half years ago i think my life other than the minor aspects that i don't go and clear the dishes anymore in the restaurant i think the it has been about the same like okay. you know i'm there in the restaurant all day you know i'm just taking care of things so my question was uh, are you going to accelerate No, I see I've never been a very um, ag- I've never been one of those people who really wanted to aggressively expand or something because no I don't want to I mean I could maybe by now have expanded more aggressively but I don't want to get into that I want I, st- I want to have time for myself um, and I am also sometimes a little bit lazy so mm-hmm. I like doing things at my own pace and I don't want to just get into something and then feel like it's a burden upon me so when i feel like it i will do it okay so there is no drive for me that i so need only to... when the push comes to the show uh, yeah i mean for me there is no need like i'm okay. happy the way things are going so maybe i can open three more outlets and spend like so many more hours dealing with so many issues but maybe i'll do one next year instead of doing three next year i mean what's the rush right like I mean end of the day it's all about having fun and having a good time. Mm-hmm. Um I'm making money so I'm happy with that. So I'm happy with that. Right. I mean more money couldn't hurt. Never hurts to have more money. Mm-hmm. It's that's always a good thing. But uh, yeah, there's always that personal calculation that you do like how much more do you want to make versus how much more work or how much more effort does it take and if you are lazy i mean okay that's okay we we'll do things a little bit go do it a bit slow you know okay. slow and steady so is this a message that you have for all the young budding no. entrepreneurs no no <laughs> I, I, that's not a message that i have okay. so sometimes a per, what a per, there's nothing that a person should do i can't tell somebody you should be very aggressive nor should i tell people that you should be very laid back mm-hmm. that depends on your personality mm-hmm. and what your preferences in life are Uh, there are people at 20 22 they're like running like mad even me all my life i was always doing even in my software company i would only pick up projects that i like so mm. if i didn't like it no matter how much the client paid me i would not take it up mm. i'm not saying that's a good thing there are people who are aggressive who snap it up mm-hmm. because that's their personality so there is no right or wrong here mm. it everything is dependent on your personality type mm-hmm. and i have a certain personality type because of which i can do a few things i can't do a few things sure. i can't do things i don't like mm-hmm. that can be seen both as a positive thing and also a big drawback it depends on what you prioritize if somebody prioritizes money mm. or making money mm-hmm. or aggressive expansion and you know growing getting a lot of fame and all then my personality of not doing things that i don't like is actually a very big drawback in business because sometimes you should be willing to do things that you don't like mm-hmm. for me the i find huge resistance internal <laughs> resistance i just can't do it i'm unable so you can call it a character flaw uh, but that is what i am so i'm, I'm fine so, with it so a person is who he is and uh, we are who we are some people can actually work on it and change things change i things. i think i'm a, i'm a, i'm an old dog i can't right. <laughs> so um today uh, let's say uh, let's say a person is born in you know some remote area let's say he's born in um, somewhere near anakapalli or you know rural rural yeah. of anakapalli ah. so you know and uh, let's say he's watching this interview hmm. uh, and let's say he has a passion towards becoming somebody becoming something so uh, what is the message that you have for him or her um 
Okay, now I'll have to think about this one a bit. Uh, so definitely i am not one of those very inspirational people out there so i cannot tell you something that's really very profound here uh, but i think uh, you have to be a little bit smart about you know one choosing what you want mm-hmm. you know it's like i would not choose to want to be a famous painter mm-hmm. no i'm a hussein or no picasso or some or even like somebody at a very basic level because i understand sometimes like my limitations maybe i'm wrong mm. maybe i could be but you know you have to take calculated risks right so and uh, that comes out of a little bit of awareness of what you think what uh, you have to measure your skills mm. in some way and figure it out for example let, let us say if um, let's say you're you're a musician like you want, let's say you want to become like a rock star mm-hmm. or something or you want you want to be a guitar player or you want to be a singer so you know you have to figure out where you stand currently and compare it with people who are already there in the business and then see if there's a path for you from here to there like from a, i'm talking about a pure, pure talent basis uh, let's not even talk about the whole other aspect which is about marketing and sometimes yeah, yeah. there's just luck but to be better than the guys who are already doing like are you better than it and is that a real objective judgment because mm-hmm. sometimes we're so biased yeah. like you know we think like sometimes i make something and i'm like this is the best thing in the whole world but it's not the best thing in the whole world like <laughs> i realize that i mean it's nice like you know i might like for that moment tell it like this is the bloody the best dish in the whole world yeah. like you know come on move over to garden ram say but you know it's not <laughs> right <laughs> so uh, that sort of self awareness and realization has to be there otherwise you'll be caught in this a little bit of you brace where you think like you know you are on top of the world but the reality doesn't support that mm. so you have to see where you are exactly based on reality and that can be a, a difficult thing to figure out uh, it depends on who is around you we need a lot of external people to give you feedback sometimes you know things like when i wanted to open a restaurant in vizag like everybody said no it will fail yeah i'm like we just opened it i just did it anyway i maybe they could have been right but in this case i was right was like right. literally every single person yeah. uh some people came and said no the vastu of the building is wrong <laughs> like if the, the people ran there it closed and then they were like who would eat italian in vizag nobody will eat italian in vizag it doesn't work i said well you know you haven't had my italian because i was really sure because and when i made that food even before i opened in vizag we actually did a bunch of trials with my friends in bangalore and these are people who had food as well they ate it and they loved it they literally licked their plates clean i knew that the product was good so i had the confidence that the product was good but it was just not the confidence i had a little bit of a feedback and then this in- intuition so sometimes you can't break down intuition into uh, very concrete steps and put it on paper and say this is the process yeah. so for someone who wants to do something mm-hmm. or be somewhere first they have to figure out if they really stand a chance Yes. First thing is if they really stand a chance. They really stand a chance, and like, are they? Is their evaluation uh, backed by reality? Are they being objective about it? Mm-hmm. Like, I know a lot of people who just say, you know, I want to be a movie star. I can, I, I, I can act, but do they really have that acting skills? Maybe movie industry is a bad example <laughs> uh, because you know, obviously, there's no correlation yeah. between talent and talent stars. Talent and stars. You know, you know that, <laughs> that the industry is very. Um, maybe uh, see the rest let's talk about music in the music industry see even in music like because i deal with a lot of independent artists um and they're like such phenomenal so one of the things i really like is in the music thing we promote a lot of bands and these mm-hmm. are bands that just start and uh, we uh, i see a lot of phenomenal talent uh, in the country but the uh, opportunities that It's are serious. available are very low so yeah. it can take a long time to yeah. for them to even you know, make a song or make an album make a song make an album we have such such fantastic uh, you know musicians from vizag right. we have yeah. music directors yeah. from vizag <laughs> yeah. and uh, you know i i know the challenges with the grammy award winners you know? we have grammy yeah. award winners so, but some of these people i know and you know there's a lot of challenges that they face um, so there is no clear cut formula to it but one of the thing is like you have to make sure that your skills are top notch like Uh, you have to start with that mm-hmm. there is no substitute to that if your skills are not top notch then you will not make it so you just need to practice till you, till the time your skills yes. are up to the mark up to the mark it has to be beyond that beyond it that. has to be better than what's already there and when you are there then you you have a shot wow 
so uh, most people don't spend enough time on on just upgrading their skills they spend more times about thinking like you know or sometimes you know wallowing in self pity like and i'm so good i'm not making it out there so i think that sort of attitude can be self defeating right. um, so one you have to make sure that your product is best out there if it is not mm-hmm. you should always go to somebody who's better than you and see what they're doing right what you have to learn from learn from them. Them. learn from the them. person so, who's better than you absolutely so doesn't matter who it is whether you're an actor you're a musician there's always somebody who's who better. is better than you i mean it can be uh, not just a popular version of better mm-hmm. maybe from even critically like yeah. i'm sure like mm-hmm. there like if you're a musician there mm-hmm. like some people who are critically acclaimed to be like good so you have to ask like why can't i be that guy why mm. can't i be better than that mm. guy because you have to set such high benchmarks mm. you just can't say i'm better than all the guys in my college i'm me. better than all the guys in my town that's right no yeah just look at the guys who are at the absolute, absolute top. top and then if you say like that's okay i can't mm. be there mm. right and then maybe that will sort of give you, you like that's the drive that you get from that's the drive yeah. especially if somebody is really so aggressive about so who is the person who who uh, you know motivated you to start a restaurant so i okay so i'm like probably a bad example i just started because i just wanted to just do wanted. it so i i was in a, what, what, what what was your favorite restaurant uh, when you were a child uh so hmm that's a tough question or was it a food joint or was it hmm. so uh, now that i have to think because i was always like eating at so many different places it would be hard for me to pick a favorite i had a lot of nice uh, favorite places in uh, chennai though mm-hmm. i used to go to um, a lot of um, like all the benjerong i used to eat a lot of asian food mm. even um, the uh, card it's been so long i don't <laughs> remember the names but Uh, there used to be a chain of restaurants that i used to visit uh, they all owned by the same group so there was cascade the benjerong i think it's the oriental mm-hmm. group i think so fantastic so restaurants all, most of them were uh, asian chinese uh, no 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 they were, they're all different cuisines but oh, they're yeah. owned by the same group so which i realized much later uh-huh. when uh, yeah like, when we when we go to a restaurant no, I, i used to go to all these restaurants and i used to really love the food uh, and then uh, much later i realized that they were all basically owned by the one guy one guy uh so chenna had like some really good food mm-hmm. so i used to eat out a lot there mm. so but it would be difficult for me to think of like one personal favorite restaurant i think that's a little right. bit of okay. a tough thing to okay so let's say a person you know right now he is 50 60 years old you know they might be thinking not much left for them to live uh, but they still you know have a chance of at making it as a point in the, in the world mm. um what what is that you want to tell it to them well, i i haven't been so i can i probably have more to tell to the people who are younger because i've been there yeah. but i haven't <laughs> i am still a long way to reach before i'm 50 or 60 so i really don't know what the mindset of people at that age, age would be age like mm-hmm. uh, but um, even though i can't think of somebody right off the bat there are a lot of people who started very late the mm. people who started at like you know late, late 40s and 50s and still have made a mark mm. be it writers or uh, i'm not sure about music but i'm sure there are a lot of writers who started very late and who done that so i don't think that uh, should be a limitation but then of course there are some constraints uh, okay there is one question which has been pinching me to yeah. ask you and i want to ask you, ask you oh, okay finally okay what do you think of the restaurants mm-hmm. which which are multi cuisine Okay so I've never really been no I've never really liked multi cuisine restaurants personally um because uh, largely because multi cuisine has been associated with mediocrity like you know so you're an italian restaurant you have to do italian restaurant italian food right but most multi cuisine restaurants are very tend to be average i'm not saying there are some maybe a few that might be doing exceptionally good food but i've never really liked multi cuisine restaurant but it is important to understand that you know this is just my personal opinion but multi cuisine restaurants actually serve a very important place in the market see end of the day business is catering to the preferences of mm-hmm. the people and mm-hmm. that's the market mm-hmm. and multi cuisine uh, there are a bunch of people somebody wants to eat asian food somebody wants to eat indian food they just can't decide yeah so they'll be the tussle do we go indian do we go italian and yeah. go to multi cuisine and they have everything but yeah. the problem is most of these places 
the food tends not to be great and if somebody has figures out like i mean if there's a restaurant which does all these cuisines equally well very few of them do but then there's nothing wrong with the idea of that because mm. if you have a large group of 10 people forget it two people can't agree on what they want to eat right yeah. somebody wants to eat yeah. something somebody wants yeah. always somebody has to compromise but mm-hmm. if you have an option to go to a multi cuisine restaurant where you have everything available mm-hmm. on in theory that's not a bad idea it's not a bad idea it's just that the originally all the restaurants that we had to as we were growing were all multi cuisine right multi-cuisine. so yeah. like we used to go to all the uh, daspala the restaurants in the daspala the all of them had like multi cuisine multi cuisine and uh, stand alone we had indian and asian mostly some of them snuck in a little bit of continental yeah. food mm-hmm. uh, i personally don't like it but it is it is a very good uh i mean it, it's a good business idea it's it's more difficult to manage specialty restaurants are much easier to manage mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, multi cuisine you have to imagine that there's so many cuisines so you know your kitchen segmented into various sections there's lot more material there is a uh, the amount of manpower increases so there are large complex operations to be honest like i'm not sure if i would be able to run a multi cuisine restaurant it's, yeah. it's quite challenging yeah. because you have dealing with like so many different types of manpower in the kitchen that's right if i run a multi cuisine restaurant i'm not sure that i would be able to do such a great job either because yeah. it, it is yeah. by nature very challenging yeah. so personally i i don't visit multi cuisine restaurants i because i i fix up in my mind what i want to eat and then i go there and i eat so i never found the need to visit a yeah. multi cuisine restaurant yeah. much but uh, as the, the business model it's, it's it's still viable there is still a market for it mm-hmm. so uh, looking back at all the past 8 years so do you think yourself and pat on yourself saying that you did a good job uh i think i've been doing a good job yeah. <laughs> uh not in the sense of like i want to pat myself on the back saying yeah but uh, i think uh, i don't have any complaints yeah. uh, it's going on it's going mm-hmm. good <laughs> so that's really good and uh, i've taken a lot of clients my clients or you know, a lot of people to your, to your restaurant and uh, they have loved it the yeah. one here in hyderabad <laughs> thank you <laughs> and also the one in vizag as well yes that's so, the first one yeah, so the first one that's my baby <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and i also heard uh, uh, probably from you or from someone else that the, the restaurant in vizag it actually uh, makes much better than the restaurant uh, so so we have like we do huge volumes in vizag so i mean Uh, it's obviously it's a, uh, like we've been there right we are an older institution the one in hyderabad is newer so obviously the older restaurants will obviously have like more a uh, much larger customer mm-hmm. base and uh, our clientele has always been very uh, a lot of regulars because we uh, till date we haven't really done much marketing marketing mm-hmm. like till date like and now we're probably going to change that a little bit uh, but we've never really advertised much uh, or actually for the first Five to six years, we have never even put out a single ad anywhere. Mm. So it's always been word of mouth. So the people who come in are the people who come like the food. They go, they get the friends. Somebody comes to buy that, they bring them to the restaurant. It's mm-hmm. sort of become that sort of a a mini institution yeah. of uh, it's in itself and buy that. Great bag. place to hang. Yeah, and Hyderabad is a much different. It's a more upscale space. It's a, so there are both different. I won't say that this does better than this or this does better. There. we position them actually into different segments okay. the the hyderabad one especially the jubilee hills mm-hmm. one i have one one more in manjara mm-hmm. so that's more very similar to the mm-hmm. one in vaidag mm-hmm. uh, along in terms of the positioning but the jubilee hills one is a very nice uh, fancy mm-hmm. upscale version mm-hmm. so it's this obviously going to be different yeah. in the the turn and coming to the uh, to you, to your live music that yes. you put out, put out <laughs> yeah. how did that crazy idea come to you no we, we uh, i mean we opened a bar mm-hmm. and uh, that we uh, we ha- we always wanted to do live music we uh, i mean obviously there's some entertainment there's music and the place was built with you know uh, that in mind that there was space for a stage and everything so we uh, we just did it we got some great bands and uh, we sort of created a trend which uh-huh. just exploded and right now uh, and now i hear hear that people uh, call you right from Thursday for your Wednesdays. Oh yeah, yeah. some uh, so Wednesday Thursday is like today the Thursday so it is it, it tends to be very busy. We get booked out uh, way in advance mm-hmm. uh, whenever we do the regional bands and we do them like 4 to 5 days a week and then we do English, we do classic rock, we do techno, we do multiple genres. We mm-hmm. even had international artists play. 
at the venue so we're trying to like you know do something to the scene like you know also a lot of people weren't really exposed to the whole idea of live music before we started like you know i mean there were venues obviously doing live music but uh, the way it exploded in popularity was when we uh, did you and especially when we did the telugu band Telugu. so yeah. it just went viral yeah. across the city so yeah it gets booked out sometimes yeah. well in advance so <laughs> right, yeah, it was really nice oh, it was lovely with you. talking to you honest yes. hope you have a great uh, future ahead yeah And all the best with looking, uh, your yeah thank you well. thank you And looking forward for uh, another interview probably down the lane <laughs> <laughs> should come down sometime and have a nice yeah. pasta <laughs> <laughs> sure i'll do it thank you